Hey guys, welcome to another video. All right, what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna finish up uh, section 25 of the plans, which is putting together this last piece, which is basically the stuff that you do before you actually start assembling that mid fuselage set of ribs and like the, the bottom pan or whatever they call it. Um, but first I have to do this last little bit before I move on to the new section, which I think I can do in about a second and done. See, one second. Anyone buying this? Okay, um, so real simple. Uh, this piece took about 45 minutes or so. It's really only made up of like six pieces. One of them is this, this strap right here that you have to cut apart and then you just rivet those onto these two risers and this main um, spar across the bottom. Super, super simple. So this is, goes right here, and I don't know if you can see this, but it's this piece back here. So now we get to start working on this. So this is the thing that I, I've been looking forward to because now you're starting to actually see like a, a, a part come together. So I'm gonna start gathering up all the bits, pieces, and parts and lay them out on the table and then start working on this sucker. Mm, yay, making progress. I keep saying it, but here soon we're actually gonna have a plane to work with. Well, hopefully. Alrighty, onward. Okay, so in the next little bit, I'm gonna be using this. This is an Insta 361. It is a 360 degree camera that I had talked about previously getting to uh, sort of show what I'm working on and focus it. I've reframed it into a full screen so it's not that fisheye look. Um, mini review, this is actually a really cool camera. The only, the only weird thing I don't like about it, I say I don't like it, but it just seems a bad design, is that these bubble domes are just, they're, they're protruding so far out there that if you like drop it, that's what it's gonna hit. So I try to always keep it in the sleeve when I'm not using it. So, but that's what this is. So if you ever see it in the background on one of my videos, it's probably because it's filming. I'm not going to overuse it though, <clears throat> but for now I'm trying to figure out how to use it. So anyways, um, if you guys want to help me afford these sort of things, uh, one of the things you can do is you can actually buy an airplane from Vans. Vans will send me a hundred bucks, just like these five people did. And I want to point out number three, an ISD. So that's really cool. Um, an independent school district in San Antonio or just south uh, I think it's Southeast, if I recall, because I'm from there. Um, in San Antonio, though, effectively, is building a plane? That is the coolest thing ever. I didn't have anything like that when I was when I was a kid growing up. If you're in high school and they're building a plane, that's awesome, guys. That's really cool. Anyways, when you order your kit, Vans will send me 100 bucks. It's no money out of your pocket. It's just a way of saying thank you and help support me. So there you go. Anyways, here comes this little bit. This is going to be the first test of actually using this 360 degree camera to do this. Let's see if it works. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to get creative on how you uh, rivet some of this stuff. I've got this seat belt bar here, you can kind of see. It's this thicker bar. And there's a nut plate underneath this blue tape. I got the tape on here just to kind of hold it together for the time being. You had to dimple this side of this piece and then countersink under on the underside of this and i've got those two rivets in there and i'm getting ready to do it and i realized i don't really have a good way to uh, rivet this thing together other than back rivet back rivet is the king and so but because of <laughs> because of these flanges on the side of this part i couldn't put it like flat on this because of the table so i had to get a, a board and then put my rivet plate on that and then work from there. So yeah, sometimes you gotta get kind of clever on how you do this stuff, but eh, it works. So here we go. So while I continue working in the background, I had someone ask me the other day, does it make sense to get more than one of these cages for countersinking? Um, 
If you can afford it, I would say absolutely. Uh, one thing you'll see me do a lot is I'm changing the bit in here to go between number 30, number 40, or 12, or whatever. If you can, and that means I have to not only change this bit, but I also have to change the cage as to how far it sinks. So every single time I'm readjusting. Um, if you could set it once and forget it kind of thing where you, you know, you put a number 30 on here and that's just your number 30 cage from then on, you don't ever have to change it. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If you can afford it, I would say absolutely get more than one of these. Realistically, I would say, again, not you can do everything with one, but if you can afford it, I would say get three. One for number 30, one for number 40, that's permanently, those are number 30 and those are number 40 always, and then another one that you'll switch between whatever else you need, mostly that'll be number 12, but it, it, you know, there's other options. Um, uh, yeah, if you can afford it, I would say do that. Now that brings up an interesting point. Does it make sense to get more than one of these little drills? Yes, for the same reason. If you can afford it, again, I'm not advocating, I'm not saying you need to do this, uh, but if you can afford, I think these are like 69 or $79. I mean, if you can get one for number 30, one for number 40, uh, and then maybe a third one that's for everything else, yeah, because you're, you probably see me, I'm always unchucking and rechucking drill bits because it's just a constant thing. So what would be really cool is if you just have a rack that you hang it up in and this is the number 30 drill from then on, right? It's got one drill bit and that's it. It's always number 30. That'd be really handy. Uh, so you don't need to do that. I haven't done that, but there's there. I mean, if you got the money for it, you definitely, that is an advantage. Now, the downside to that is I think once you do finish building the plane, are you going to be able to get your money back out of this? Nah. No one's going to buy this, right? If you can go buy this for 50 or 60 bucks at Walmart or Home Depot or whatever Lowe's uh, or Ace, that's, that's what you would do. You wouldn't buy a used one, especially considering how many hours is going to be on this thing once I'm done with it. It's basically going to be trash. I'll probably harvest the batteries. But other than that, uh, I think that's the only downside is that it, it would be an expense that you really can't recoup other than time, you know, the amount of time it takes you to constantly be rechucking or finding drill bits. Cause I've dropped a drill bit and on the floor here, there's cracks. There's kind of spaces between the sections. And one of my number 30 drill bits went down into there and I, I struggled forever. I was like, where the hell did that drill bit go? You know, it's on the ground. I'm like, I just dropped it. I heard it fall. I know it's right here. And then I, I just saw a glint as I walked past and thankfully I have a magnet. I just popped it up back out of there. But, um, having, having the convenience of not having to constantly be rechucking drill bits. That'd be great. So anyways, uh, I hope that answers your question. You don't need to have multiples. You don't need to have multiples of these either, but that'd be awesome. If you got the money. Yeah, sure. Go for it. All right. So I am done clicking together the inboard seat rib. Um, I've got the other side. So these, these sit like this in the plane. I've got the other side clicked together, but I haven't riveted it. So this one's all riveted up ready to go. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. I think everything came out great with the exception of right here on this, what are they called? NACA vents or whatever, just this vent hole. Um, my gun setting was a little too high. So uh, your gun's going to be a little different, but mine has this, the ability to adjust the pressure via this knob down here, up and down. And I don't adjust it very often, honestly, but I had adjusted it when I was working on some of those thicker pieces with the bigger, heavier rivets, just to give more punch so that I could uh, assemble everything effectively, uh, more conveniently for myself. And unfortunately on this really thin aluminum and this really thin uh, vent, stock aluminum it it kind of bent it a little bit it was hitting too hard i'm not sure if you can see that it's really subtle so it's not like it's a big deal but this rivet in particular got overset effectively it hit it too hard and it kind of bent it bent the aluminum on the back my concern there is i'm well i'm hoping it doesn't interfere with this piece so this is the this piece is like the seat belt sub assembly something goes in here and then and then there's a uh, a screw that goes through here and engages this nut plate. So I'm hoping that this slightly overdriven uh, rivet, it's not even the rivet, it's just that it bent, it, it bent the rib. I'm hoping that doesn't interfere. I don't think it will. I mean, like I said, it's, it's really super subtle. Looking here, you can probably see if I, in the reflection, if I move it around, it looks real bad. It's, it's not, uh, but it's not ideal. It's not what I would have wanted, but meh, well. Um, 
So I've got this one done. Now I'm gonna work on getting the other one done so that I'll have both of them finished. And then we're gonna go on to other bits and bobs that I've got for uh, parts for. So, all right. Okay, so I lost a little bit of footage. Um, I'm gonna struggle on and power through, but basically uh, where I'm at is uh, a couple pages later from where you guys last saw. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm gonna take this big pile and actually start assembling it into the floorboard area, which is gonna be right about here from the plane. Um, that's what I'm working on now. Uh, things that you didn't get to see because I lost footage were these two guys. Now, these are the two outermost bits uh, for the seat rail supports. And then uh, these you did see, I saw the, uh, these go in between, um, you know, here. And so I'm going to be working on put, uh, well, here, <laughs> working on this here now. I got to get the big yellow spar out, that center spar where I'm going to assemble all this stuff onto, and that's what I'm going to be working on today. Anyway, guys, thank you so very much. That's where I'm going to end this one. If you want to help support this channel, hit that like button and subscribe. Click the bell if you want notifications. And if you really want to support me for as little as a dollar a month, you can jump over to my Patreon page and help support me that way. Uh, also, uh, if you want to build a Vans aircraft, you absolutely can. It doesn't have to be an RV-10. It could be any of their lineup. If you use my builder number when you buy your first kit, Vans will send me $100. It's no money out of your pocket. It's just a way of saying thanks. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.